Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Yeah, this is the second video that I was talking about in the other one. Um, this one is going to be a bit longer. Um, there's a lot of scripture involved and I hope that you can't hear what's going on outside. Maybe I should close the doors. All right, so let us pray before we get into it. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we just want to thank you for the gift of life. Father, I want to pray for understanding amongst your people. I pray that whoever listens to or watches this video will actually hear the words that the Spirit of the Lord, that your Spirit, Father, has to say to him or her. Father, I pray that your people would be receptive to this word and that they would actually commit themselves to seeking you more right now because we're living in the end times in the mighty and precious name of christ jesus i pray amen so um this is going to be a bit of a scripture dense video um that's because of a vision that i had on tuesday um i was just feeling a bit tired um and sleepy in the afternoon after eating and yeah i was like you know what let me just go lay down and then when i woke up that's when i looked outside it had been a bit of a gloomy day as well so i guess all of that just made me sleepy and i think it was even raining so it was just a perfect time to sleep then i woke up and you know how sometimes you look up in the sky and like it's kind of overcast but not quite and it's mostly overcast and there are gaps in the clouds through which the sun actually shines so it was like that but it was beautiful but i knew that there was something different about it because there was a bit of a a frightful feeling attached to it so i was like hmm god what are you saying and he just said the day of the lord i was like hmm interesting okay and then well, I just prayed about it, you know, and I was like, okay, well, reveal to me what it means. What does the day of the Lord actually mean? And then the following day, that's when I was like, you know what? I don't think that was an ordinary thing that the Lord just said to me, the day of the Lord. I feel like there is more to it. So I went and I did my research and then I found these scriptures that all talk about the day of the Lord and it's mostly in reference to judgment and I had also had a dream um, like when I woke up in the morning that's when I was thinking oh I had this dream last night where there was a guy who arrived at his graduation ceremony late it was supposed to start at 11 a.m. sharp this guy rolled around in his car at 11 33 now i know that the lord sometimes uses numbers to speak to me so i went and i looked it up i don't believe in angel numbers by the way i look at the biblical meaning of numbers okay everything has to be scripture based and it's basically um with reference to judgment the number 11 mostly just represents judgment and 33 being a multiple of 11 also was just talking about the judgment of the lord so i was like okay the day of the lord and then this time slash these numbers that you have just given me the 11 33 hmm, the guy was actually late for his graduation ceremony so i was like okay yeah yeah that definitely talks about judgment i mean it's just the way that i saw it and you know we all have different dream language so yeah so the first scripture is Isaiah 2 verse 12 and it reads for the Lord of hosts has a day against all that is lofty against all that is lifted up and high then we go on to Isaiah 13 verse 6 which reads well for the day of the Lord is near as destruction from the Almighty it will come Isaiah 13 verse 9 reads behold the day of the Lord comes cruel with wrath and fierce anger to make the earth a desolation and to destroy its sinners from it then we move on to um isaiah 2 verse 17 <laughs> which reads and the arrogance of man will be brought low and the pride of man shall be humbled 
the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. And then we're going to move on to Ezekiel 30 verse 3, which reads, For the day of the Lord is near. The day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. Then Joel 2 verse 1 well, verses 1 to 2, 8, that's like the first part of verse 2. I think it has about three parts, um, so I'm just going to call that 2a. So it reads, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the Lord, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. And 2a reads, A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Then we go on to Joel 1 verses 14 and 15 and it reads, Sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry to the Lord. Alas for the day! For the day of the Lord is near, and as destruction from the Almighty, it comes. Joel 3 verses 13 to 15, and it says, Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Go in, tread for the winepress is full. The vast overflow, oh sorry, the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the lord is near in the valley of decision the sun the moon are darkened and the stars withdraw their shining so i know that was a lot of scripture but there is also um a, a scripture that i'm reminded of from revelations 14 um from verses 14 to the end which is verse 20 and it reads then I looked and there was a white cloud and one like the son of man was seated on the cloud with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand another angel came out of the temple crying out in a loud voice to the one who was seated on the cloud use your sickle and reap for the time to reap has come since the harvest of the earth is ripe so the one seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested then another angel who also had a sharp sickle came out of the temple in heaven. Yet another angel who had authority over fire came from the altar and he called with a loud voice to the one who had a sharp sickle. Use your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the vineyard of the earth because its grapes have ripened. So the angel swung his sickle at the earth and gathered the grapes from the vineyard of the earth and he threw them into the great wine press of God's wrath. Then the press was trampled outside the city and blood flowed out of the press up to the horse's bridles for about 180 miles. So this is a scripture that I was reminded of by Joel 3 verses 13 to 15, which also talks about, you know, um, put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe and then go in and trade for the wine press is full. So basically, <sighs> the Lord is just sending us reminders and warnings that we're living in the last days. We have to be careful how we live our lives. We shouldn't be living our lives as though earth is all we have to worry about. Jesus talks about, you know, we shouldn't be fearing man who can only destroy the body and can't do anything to our souls or our spirits after that. He says that instead we should fear he who can destroy both the body and the spirit. So we need to be mindful of who we're honoring as we live our lives. If you're honoring men by your actions, then, you know, <laughs> it's rather unfortunate, but there will be a hell after this. And if you're honoring God, then you don't have to worry about your spirit being destroyed in hell after you die. 
because you know that your eternity is secured. So I just pray that the Lord will help you to really focus on what is important right now, to focus on the things that truly matter, that you would stop this rat race of just chasing money and chasing popularity and fame and any other things you could chase that are not things of the kingdom of God. Focus instead on the kingdom of God and focus on the things that edify your spirit, on the things that are going to help you to mature spiritually. I was talking to a friend of mine last week and she had posted something about how, you know, um, people's opinions of God do not necessarily define who he is because if they did, <laughs> then that would be a problem. And then under that post, she was basically asking, how is it that we can live our lives professing that Jesus is our savior, yet we are concerned about other things and we are serving money and whatever else can be served out there, idols, and we're not serving God. Yet we think that we're going to live with him for eternity and we can't even praise him right now or honor him right now with the things we do. We can't take time to to, to just worship him or to read the word or to just sit in silence with him, to sit at his feet and just have him pour into us. And we expect to spend eternity with him. How? The math is not mething, okay? <laughs> it's not mething. It doesn't add up. Because the word of God tells us that we're going to be praising him forever. We will be worshiping him forever. So how can you live a life right now, which is, by the way, just, just a tiny fraction of what your life could possibly be. That is if you don't later go and get destroyed in hell. How is it that you can't even spend 20 minutes worshiping God, praising God, yet you expect to spend eternity praising him how it's like you thinking that you're going to be able to run a marathon that's like 10 kilometers long and you don't even practice on a daily basis for that marathon how do you think you're going to be able to run the 10ks how you have to start practicing we have to start honoring God. We have to start praising him, worshiping him, doing things that glorify him. We have to start small. <laughs> you have to start somewhere. So I pray that this encourages somebody to just live their life differently. Live your life differently. Honor God with the things that you do. In fact, ask him, God, what should I do to honor you? Instead of you just doing whatever you want to do and you're like, okay, that should honor God. No. How about you ask him what he wants you to do in order to honor him? And I also have to be doing that. No, I'm not coming here and telling you these things because I haven't mastered it all. I haven't. <laughs> We're learning and we just have to keep going forward, you know, day by day. And asking his spirit to guide us. So I hope that this message encourages somebody and that it blesses somebody. Be mindful of the things that you do, the things that you're allowing into your spirit, the things that you're allowing into your heart. Because sometimes you don't even realize that you have an idol seated on you on the throne of your heart. You don't realize that you just assume that God is still the one who is seated on the throne in your heart. But then when you start to examine certain things, you realize that maybe you started to serve other things instead of God. So just be mindful of that. Anyway, bye.